Hello, Space.com viewers. I am here with Lance Bass from NSYNC. He has a new podcast with iHeartRadio called The Last Soviet, and the first episode dropped on February 15th. And you can catch his podcast on all major platforms. Now, as many fans will remember, Lance has loved space for a long time. And in fact, he was supposed to fly on a Russian Soyuz mission in 2002, but never quite made it. And so we're going to learn here more about his podcast and space experience. So welcome, Lance. Thanks for coming. And tell us, when did you first become interested in space? Ooh, I mean, as a kid, like most of us do, uh, I was fascinated with space. Um, growing up on movies like Space Camp <laughs> really helped. Um, also, even Nickelodeon, you know, watching Double Dare, the, the, you know, if you won Double Dare, a lot of the times you got to go to Space Camp at Cape Canaveral. And I always thought that would be so much fun because they show all this footage um, so that kind of, you know, wet my appetite uh, about space, but it wasn't really until I was probably eight or nine years old that uh, my dad took me down to Cape Canaveral to watch a shuttle launch and watching that really changed my life. I just loved the idea of being to be a part of something like that, something so major and it was the exploration and it was the discovery that really interests me. A lot of people just want to know what it's like to float in space. But for me, it was always about discovering something new. Uh, and I knew that's where uh, that was what my path was going to be. I agree. Discovering something new is ideal and space is a perfect format for that. And so how did your experience with NSYNC prepare you for training um, as a cosmonaut with the Russians? Um, oddly, it prepared me a lot uh, for, for training. Uh, our schedule was so hectic within sync. We didn't have a day off, uh, rarely have a day off. Um, so the work ethic that was instilled with me within sync really helped with the cosmonaut training because you had to have a very, very healthy work ethic, um, especially what I had to do. You know, usually when you train to go to space, you know, it takes, you know, a couple of years, but with this, they condensed it into a six month program. So you don't get weekends off. It's seven days a week, five in the morning till about 8 p.m. at night. Uh, they work you like a dog. Uh, but it was so fascinating that I enjoyed every second of it. And uh, but those instinct days definitely, you know, you you learned never to talk back and just do what you're told and, you know, and learn this and just shut up and do it. And that's what I did. And that's why I think I was able to complete this program. Wonderful. And then how did the training go overall? And why did you never get the chance to go to space? Well, the training was great. Uh, you know, it was a little lonely because uh, my, my engineer that was going to go with me had already trained. Uh, so I didn't get to really do many of the classes with him. And my my commander, he'd also flown to space twice before. So, you know, he had already finished the program. So it was just kind of me in most of these classes, just me and a professor learning astrophysics and Russian language and the makeup of a Soyuz um, and doing the centrifuge and all these, the parabolic flights. Uh, you know, it was a little long. It was fun, but there was no one there to share it with. Uh, you know, but so I have to like rely on my memory, which I don't have much of a memory anymore. Uh, but it was very fascinating. It is it is amazing what you can get yourself to accomplish and do when you're so passionate about something. Like I had no idea that I would be able to learn what I was able to learn in such a short amount of time, but it's because of my love for it. And of course, you had the best people around you uh, every step of the way. Um, but then ultimately, uh, my mission did not go. Uh, a week before launch, I was heading to Baikonur, um, and, you know, I was only the third space tourist that they had. Uh, it was right after Mark Shuttleworth, the first African in space. I took over, you know, his profi and everything. So um, I forget where I was going with this. Uh, <laughs> crap. Uh, crap. I forget what I was saying about this. What was the question? Oh, no problem at all. Basically, what I was asking was um, what ultimately occurred? Why did oh, you know? Yes. When oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's why it it escapes me because I don't remember want to want to remember it sometimes. But yeah, a week before launch, uh, this was all for you know as a space tourist, and I was going to be the youngest person to go to space, and they they wanted me to do this mission because it was going to uh, really inspire a younger generation to care about math and science and space because around that time in you know year 2000 no one cared about space like no one like no one was talking about it especially kids they just did not 
they didn't have the love for it like we did growing up in the 80s. So they wanted someone like me that had a good outreach for the younger generation um, to experience this and kind of encourage kids to really look into, you know, math and science and space. Um, so that was my, you know, whole goal of being there, but it was part of a documentary. Uh, but last minute, they realized that they had no insurance to cover the documentary uh, because insurance companies don't insure astronauts. Um, and so they had to cancel the documentary because of insurance. And if there's no documentary, there's no flight. So very highly disappointed, but uh, it was still amazing to be able to finish that training. I'm very sorry to hear that. I know you were probably, what, about 23 at the time. So that's really, really rough. Um, so what did you take from that experience, um, as disappointing as the um, end happened to be, that you're going to be bringing into this podcast? Yeah. Well, I think uh, the things that I learned over there is really educate yourself on the history of, of the countries, the space program, because we're all we're all given information from a kind of one side. Uh, but being over there as an American, really kind of seeing, you know, being scared, like, you know, we were growing up always scared of Russia. It was always like, you know, the, our competition. But getting over there and seeing how much they embraced me and how well everyone worked together, it was wonderful. And the space programs, they work so hand in hand and they respect each other that they they really stay out of politics. You know, even with what's going on right now uh, overseas, our space programs are working hand in hand together uh, and they always will because space will always trump anything that goes on in our countries. It's space is all about what's what's good for the planet and not just for the country. Please tell me more about the podcast and especially about Sergei Krikalev, that cosmonaut who was on the Soviet space station Mir during the collapse of the Soviet Union. And so is that exactly what the first episode is about? Or is there going to be a little more backstory before we get to his adventures in space? Oh, yeah. You're going to get to hear an eight-part uh, series of the whole life of Sergei Krikalev. You know, it's a story that I heard when I was over there training. Um, and what's great is Sergei is still a part of the Russian space program today. Uh, you know, he's uh, the guy that's, I mean, as you know, what's happening on the International Space Station right now with the coolant leak. Um, he's the one in charge of all that. And it's amazing to see all these cosmonauts really stick with this program from where Sergei, and you'll see he was a kid when he got into this program and he's still there today. They're so proud of it. Um but it's, you know, Sergey has a fascinating story because he was stranded in space for 313 days on a very small space station, not the ISS. Um, and he had he had to make a decision. Um, you know, it was the fall of the Soviet Union, the fall of communism, and um, his country's falling apart below him and his family and his newborn baby. And he had to make the decision, do I come back down to earth to you know, an unknown fate, or do I stay up here and I man this station and it's the last outpost of a fallen empire. Um, and through, you know, his, his patriotism, he, he sucked it up and he stayed there for 313 days and, and made it work. Um, and it was just, it's just a beautiful story and how he did it. I mean, I don't know many people that would be able to survive that long, uh, without getting space madness, but, uh, there's so many intriguing things about this story and the politics behind it and just all the lies that he was told and then talking to the only outlet he had was an, a lady in Australia through a ham radio that he was secretly talking to. Uh, you know, it's just so many details that I never knew about Sergey's life. Wow, it's going to be a lot of fun listening to the podcast. And that comes from an era, of course, where people were not spending, for the most part, a lot of time in space. You know, most shuttle missions were two weeks. Um, here we are at almost a year, um, and this was about 30 years ago. Um, can we talk about how far this series is going to bring us with the story of Crick 11? Are you planning to do another season sometime, too? Um, yeah, well, good question on how far we get into it, because we still have two episodes we haven't recorded yet. So this is, we've been, this is a very... Uh, this podcast takes a long time to do because it's very detailed with all the sound and the uh, interviews. It is a beautiful, beautiful podcast. It's you're going to disappear. You're going to like put the headphones on, close your eyes, and you're going to be able to feel like you're in space. It is just beautiful. 
Um, so we're taking our time. So we have two more episodes left, which I have not even read the scripts for. So I don't know how this even ends yet. <laughs> like I'm still interested as the host. I cannot wait to see how this is all going to end. But, uh, you know, the last Soviet hopefully is, you know, the first of many uh, scripted podcasts like that, that really bring to life um, these stories of these heroes of these cosmonauts and astronauts all over the world. Wonderful. And then um, also, have you been following Russian space news lately? You've already alluded to some of their work on the space station and uh, their relations. And so have you been sort of looking at their leaking spacecraft, um, their desire to build an independent space program? And if so, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I have, of course, you know, I've, I've been watching everything go down, um, you know, and I, I think, you know, this is what they're trained for, right? I mean, this is, you know, Sergey is behind all of this also with this, you know, mission. Uh, you know, there was a coolant leak uh, back in December. And, um, you know, that's a lot of people don't understand that the Soyuz is your escape vehicle. Not only is that how you get up there, but for astronauts, especially during the shuttle days, uh, their emergency way to get back down to Earth if something happens is you got to jump on that Soyuz and fall back down to Earth. Um, so, you know, it's, it's scary. And, um, uh, I, I do believe that they'll be able to, you know, work it out. They're going to, uh, replace the damaged capsule and, uh, send another Soyuz up. So, you know, this is something they knew could happen, would happen, and they're all trained for this. Um, as far as having our, you know, separate areas of a space, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, the one thing that I love about space is it's, it's what brings all the countries together. And that was the beautiful thing about the ISS, uh, bringing everyone together, because space is for everyone. It's not just for one country. And the things that we learn from each other is just going to advance us so much quicker. And, uh, and so I, I hope that we will always be able to share space together. Thank you. And then um, I very much assume you still want to go to space, you know, and so now you've got almost an embarrassment of choices, right? There's Russia, there's SpaceX, there's Virgin Galactic, there's Blue Origin, there's, you know, a number of places to go. So are you going to fly with one of them in particular, or all of them? Like, what's your, uh, your hope? Yeah, my goal is to go with every single one of them. No, I, uh, you know, going up in space, you know, for a few minutes floating around that it would be fun, but it's nothing that I really care to do. Um, my goal has always been going to the ISS, spending 10 days there, doing my experiments, you know, my original experiments with, uh, I was doing blood work studies, environmental studies of the Delta. Uh, obviously those will be, um, you know, different studies if I go now, but I would love to get with a company, a medical company or someone that, you know, is wanting to send their experiment to the ISS. And I would love to be that that astronaut for them that, that could do it. Um, Cause, one, it would just be fun to finally do an experiment up there and and help the planet. And two, I think that uh, this experiment could get a lot of attention if I did. You know, finally seeing me get up there after two decades would be nice. Then I think you want to go with Axiom Space. You tend to be the ones that send up commercial astronauts. So I'll keep my fingers crossed for you, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. That was Lance Bass from NSYNC. And do make sure to listen to his podcast, The Last Soviet.